Hey book people! Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 bookish pet peeves. Number one, overuse of exclamation points. I am of the opinion that unless someone is actually shouting or yelling or exclaiming something, that there should be no exclamation points. Number two, redundant physical description of characters, especially when it's expounding on their hotness. I get that there's attraction. I want there to be attraction. But if all you're focusing on when a character is attracted to another one is their physicality, their rock hard abs and their bulging biceps and their chiseled jaw, it loses me. I want to know how they connect emotionally. I want to feel the romance between them because they have an emotional connection instead of just a physical attraction. Pet peeve number three, when internal thoughts interrupt a conversation for so long that I lose track of the conversation. If someone asks a question and then we go into the character's head for three pages before she answers the question, I've completely lost track of what we're talking about. Also, I think it's a little bit unrealistic to think that this girl or this guy could have all of those inner thoughts going on in the two seconds required to answer the question. Pet peeve number four, when an entire plot is based on a misunderstanding that a five minute conversation could resolve. I can buy into a misunderstanding for about of a fourth of a book before I want to scream at the characters just to have the conversation already. This is especially problematic in books with dual point of view, where you know that it's a simple misunderstanding, but they just won't get together and talk about it. And along those same lines, we have pet peeve number five, unnecessary dual point of view, especially when we repeat the same scene from one point of view and then from the other. That's usually a waste of everyone's time. Now, dual point of view can be done very well. However, a lot of times with romance novels, the entire point is that we're wondering if these two are going to end up together. Does he reciprocate the feelings she's feeling? Does she really want him as much as he wants her? And if you have both of their points of view, a lot of the mystery is lost. Pet peeve number six. When the heroine and her best friend are the only reasonable females in the book and all other women are portrayed as mean girls, shallow, or self-centered. Not every popular girl is mean. Not every ex-girlfriend of the guy she's interested in is an evil witch. The main character of a book should not be the only down-to-earth, thoughtful girl around. That's insulting. Pet peeve number seven. Unhealthy relationships portrayed as swoon-worthy romantic relationships. I'm looking at you, Twilight. There's a lot that I still love about those books, but Edward taking out Bella's car battery so that she can't go somewhere that she wants to go is way not okay. Plus the whole him watching her in her sleep bit. Yeah. Pet peeve number eight. When a plot is either too big or too small for the length of the book. I realize that people eat and go for walks and do their normal daily routines, but that's not what I'm interested in when I pick up a book. If that's what you're filling the space in within a book, it probably should be shorter. And if you are writing the interesting stuff, don't skip over it too fast. We want to jump into the action and the tension and the conflict and kind of, you know, luxuriate in it and feel it all. So don't skip over the good stuff and please don't prolong the normal day stuff. Number nine, when a character has too stupid to live syndrome. In the first season of 24, Jack Bauer has just rescued his wife and his daughter from being held hostage and they go out to be rescued. They're waiting for a helicopter, I believe, and they're crouched down behind something. And the girl wants to go out in the open, his daughter does. And he says, no, 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 that's dangerous. And she disregards it and walks out into the open anyway. And unsurprisingly, she gets shot at. Really? Really, Jack Bauer's daughter? You've been held captive and terrorized for the past how many hours, and you didn't think the situation merited a, just a smidge of caution? Yeah. 
And finally, number 10. When the hero and the heroine fight, 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 and then kiss, and then fight, 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 and then somehow live happily ever after. I have a hard time believing that all of that contention and ill feeling toward each other suddenly dissolves when they kiss each other. It doesn't seem like a fun relationship to be in. How can you find contentment and trust in someone who's been at your throat for the past book length of time. I don't know. Maybe it's just because contention makes me really nervous and I cry when I encounter it in real life, but it's just not my cup of tea. So that's my list. My random 10 things in no particular order that drive me crazy when I'm reading books. What do you think? Agree? Disagree? What are some of yours? And if you'd like to support me, please, please, please like and subscribe. As always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out my channel, you can find the complete audiobook of my first book, Just Ella. It's in a chapter by chapter playlist that you can read all the way through. And if you want to check out the silly stuff like the music videos or the movie trailer spoofs, I hope you find something that you like.